welcome to Major Minor with Elsina. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted any videos, um, so I decided as a comeback I would do this visual novel. Uh, got some big plans coming for the channel, uh, and just gonna note that this is going to be a regular ending run that we're going to be doing. Um, this is my second attempt at doing a recording as well uh, because I had some issues before um, with the audio desyncing so I have to redo it here um, but this should be good enough to get us going. Alright so new game. So, here we go. Where am I? Is this outer space? No, it absolutely can't be. I'd never survive in the void. I scan my surroundings. What I see should be an impossibility. A luminescent nebula gazes back at me. It twinkles, dancing across the sky. It's beautiful, but I'm not here to stargaze. As I take in this scenario, I notice some key things. My feet are not on solid ground. I appear suspended. And for some reason, I'm able to hear and breathe. Those are the two things you can't do in space. I count this as a blessing and focus on breathing. There were exercises I could use to calm myself down. One. Two, three, four, five. Before I can count any higher, though, I'm interrupted. At that moment, I realize I'm not here by myself. I feel a hand rest upon my shoulder, and I shiver. I expect to feel fear, but a rush of calm overtakes me. Hello, and welcome to the Ark. This is a very special place, you see. Only a select few are allowed to be here. This is home to those touched by fate, imbued with a power most would call fiction. Others have come, but now it's your turn. First and foremost, I require a name. Something to enter in the annals of time. You must ensure that you aren't forgotten. I already know what we're going to do. Elsina? Elsina, hmm? It has a nice ring to it. I'm sure you'll be remembered. My name, you ask? I'm afraid that's not important. No one will remember me after this. Your presence here portends a grand fate. Not just for you, but the universe, too. That is the purpose of those who come here. To that end, what else do they call you? Your surname is just as important, and out of curiosity, I must know. Well, I've already got that in line. It's you, Maya. Uh, enter. Elsa, no, you, Maya. Mm -hmm. Very well. The pleasure is mine. In giving me your name, the deed is done. Your service to me and the Ark is pledged. But do not worry, you're not a slave. Your service rewards you with the power, something that most would kill to achieve. Others must bend to the rules of the world, but for you, the opposite rings true. You are no longer a victim of circumstance. When you make a choice, reality will bend. Your every whim will fall to your lap. The universe now accommodates you. This is the power granted to you by the Ark. This is the power granted to you by me. Oh, it appears that you're fading away. Do you long to return to Earth? I understand. There is fear in the unknown. I will find you again soon, and perhaps then we can talk a little more. 
Don't be scared, Elsina. I mean, no harm. Would you like to save your game? Yes. Um, again, I had started this before but encountered some technical difficulties. So we're just gonna start fresh here. Okay, let's go to that. Bullet train. I feel a rush of speed as I'm shot back into my body. It was almost as if my spirit momentarily left me. Who was that man? And just what was the Ark? I scratch my head in a state of sheer confusion. It definitely wasn't a dream, I know that for sure. When you wake up from a dream, you know it wasn't real. You laugh it off, continue on with your life. That's not the sensation I was feeling right now. I try to ground myself in reality. I take in my surroundings, the noises and people. I focus on my destination, Tokyo, Japan. I feel myself calm down, slowly but surely. The anxiety starts to replace itself with excitement. Though many would argue what the difference is. Who didn't dream of going to Tokyo in their lifetime? It had to be on the bucket list of millions of people. And it was the first of many places I'd visit. Same, I'd love to go. On what would surely be the best year of my life. I sit there, holding the armrest with a fierce grip. It wouldn't be long until I figured out how wrong I was. Chapter 1. The Calm Before the Storm I tried my best to maintain my composure. A can of pop star held firmly in my grasp. I wasn't one to drink energy drinks so leisurely, but I picked up what you might call an addiction. For a little bit more context, I'll say this. Popstar was a leading brand of energy drink. In fact, it was almost as popular as soda. It had full endorsement from a famous pop idol. Oh, it's like Rockstar. Okay. A contest was held to coincide with this idol's new tour. Two special cans were then thrown into the wild. Those that found them got to travel with the tour. Almost like a golden ticket from old childhood stories. The contest made the drink skyrocket in popularity. It took the world by storm, a cultural phenomenon. The chance to live a life of luxury was hard to pass up. In case you didn't know, the name of the idol was Clace. So when I say I picked up something of an addiction, that might actually be the understatement of the year. The odds of winning were literally in the billions, so it took a fair amount of chugging in order to win. I asked myself if it was worth it, but that's subjective. At least, that's why I told myself in between jitters. Being one of the lucky two came with its consequences. That's what the media called the prospective winners. Before I can continue thinking, I'm interrupted. Someone walking down the aisle has a nasty fall. They brace at their descent and land on the seat beside me. That takes a special kind of skill, doesn't it? He quickly rises to his feet, wearing a look of panic. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I nod my head. It's not the end of the world. Aside from a minor frighten, everything is fine. Although, maybe we could talk to pass the time. I'm starting to get boring, sitting by myself. First time on a train. Don't know what came over me. I just got dizzy and then BAM! Sounds like someone has a case of vertigo. I apologize again. Sorry for intruding, I really am. I try explaining to him that everything is fine, but he seems to think he's committed an awful crime. Did he? Choices will affect the way you are treated. It can also change the flow of the story. Like in any visual novel. Okay, not possible to please everyone. Before he can respond, however, an alarm sounds loudly. The train comes to a screeching halt. Mechanical failure? That's not good. Oh no, what was that? Are we going to die? I can't help but snicker at that. 
He's clearly one of those catastrophic thinkers. Good thing I brought a conch. Now I can be in power if we're stranded. He goes to rummage through his bag. Bit of a bookworm too, isn't he? In case nobody gets the reference there, that is a reference to uh, The Lord of the Flies. Um, if you don't know the plot of the book, it's about a bunch of young boys uh, get stranded on a deserted island. Um, if if Even if I'm recalling correctly, I, I believe it's based on The Lord of the Flies. Um, it's a very interesting read. I know it tends to be required reading a lot of schools. Um, if you haven't read it, I would recommend reading it. There's also a film. But the film, of course, changes up some aspects from the novel. Um, so I always typically recommend a book or the short story, a novella, whatever, over any visual adaptations. Uh, just because some liberties tend to be taken um, in, in, in Hollywood. Uh, like... I would I would like use Aragon as example, but that can be a touchy subject too. <clears throat> so moving on. Decided to just sit back and wait it out. In situations like this, there was nothing else to do. Try and think of how I could pass the time. It might be a while until we're mobile again. I can't use my phone for anything other than text. The day the charges while abroad were death sentence. But everybody back home would already be asleep. There was quite the time difference at play here. My phone vibrates and I go to look at it. Almost as if it knew I was thinking about it. It's Rook, the man I mean at the train station. Are you almost here? I can't wait all day, you know. He's wondering where I am and I'm not sure what to say. Should I play it cool or let him know we've stalled? Um, well, we don't know what's going on. We don't know how much longer it's going to take, so we're going to go with the second option. Can't say for sure. He didn't like my response. Okay. I choose to be honest with him. Wouldn't want to get things off to a bad start, which already seems like it has. But somehow, I feel like that's exactly what happened. Let's see what he replied with. Gah, uncertainty. My least favorite thing to hear. Very well. His reply signals a feeling of discontent. But there is nothing I could do. And of course, I was truthful. I could rest easy. I noticed that the squirrel's eagerly texting away. Put my phone back in my pocket and recline in my seat. I wasn't exactly sure how Rook was related to Clace. But he had to be pretty high up there. I was only given concrete details last week. I thought there'd be limos and media coverage, but I was quickly told that this wasn't the case. I was getting picked up by a regular guy named Rook. I wonder if he would go full-on cliché, with a large piece of cardboard that says Elsina. Oh man, I really hope we'll be okay. My train rides are usually incident-free. Usually? But he said that this was his first time. He seems to contradict himself without realizing it. Well, as fun as awkward silences are, we should probably get to know each other, just in case we're stuck here forever. Oh, how fun that would be. You can call me Keela. I'm here to... Well, I'm here to see some friends. What about you? What brings you to Tokyo? It's nice to meet another English speaker. I only speak Japanese at a preschool level. I'm about to answer, but I stopped myself short. I have flashbacks to when I signed that NDA. I wasn't allowed to publicly reveal why I was here. At least, not until the media made it official. But then again, what harm could it do? <laughs> it likely, it likely never find itself back to me. Plus, Kila could be impressed with who I really am. A friend would be a great thing to have while abroad. Some choices don't have immediate consequences. Immediate, keyword. Should I tell him or keep it secret for now? Sign the NDA. 
So typically, normally I would say this, but since we are gunning for the regular ending, not the true ending, the regular ending, we're going to spill the beans. Say we won the contest. Decide that there's no harm in telling him the truth. Rook and those around him would never find out. I recount the adventure I took to find the winning can. I end up rambling on a little more than I would have liked. But he seems... well, he's clearly indifferent. Oh, that's pretty cool. Not the answer I was expecting, honestly. Happy for you, though. I wish my life was that eventful. I'm just here to visit my brother. He was a big fan of Clay's, actually. He would have killed to win that contest. Thought he said he was here to meet friends? Now he's here to meet his brother? That seems odd. I'm still really excited. It's my first time in Tokyo. Gotta hit up all the maid cafes. Of course. Typical tourist. Hey, I still want to go to one myself. <clears throat> what about you? Would you ever go to a maid cafe? I've heard they're just the best. Maid cafes. Those are much like Western restaurants in Western culture. However, your waitress actually stays at your table. You converse with them, play games, get to know them. It was definitely a foreign concept to me. How do I respond to Kilo? So, um, this is going to be a truthful pick for me, but I would love to go to one. Cool. We'll have to keep in touch. I looked online at all the tourist sites. There's some great ones down at Akihabara. Before I can continue talking, the train moves again. And the passengers are shaken up by the sudden movement. Gila beams a wide smile, as if this was a major victory. Wow, I was scared for nothing. <laughs> that didn't really last long at all. He sure seems like quite the character. If we did end up going to those maid cafes, well, there'd be no shortage of entertainment. I wonder the same could be said of Rook. More importantly, I wonder how he'd treat me. He certainly seems like an interesting guy. I sure hope he doesn't find out I broke my NDA. I want to make friends here, not enemies. I find it odd that I'm analyzing my previous actions, as if I could have changed what I said and what I did. Perhaps it was because of that weird vision I had? I can control my own destiny or something like that? Quite a ridiculous thing to comprehend. If I could control my destiny, I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be off somewhere living a life of luxury. There's no use thinking like that, so I stop that exact moment, a pain attacks my chest. More pain than I've ever felt before. It pulses with my increasingly fast heartbeat. I go to clutch my gut instinctively, only to find out that I can't move. Everyone around me seems to have frozen in place. I start to panic. I go to focus on my breathing like before, but I can't breathe either. I sense someone behind me. And then I feel it, the hand on my shoulder again. The pain fades away, and I gasp loudly for air. Is there something about his touch? Terribly sorry for earlier. Our meeting seems to have been cut short. Perhaps you desire to return to Earth. After all, the universe bends to you now. Am I that frightening? Either way, I sense conflict within you. You think what happened earlier was a dream. Yet now your dream stands before you. I am real. The Ark is real. And the power that you have? Well, yes, it's real too. I'm not here to lecture you anymore. Your words and actions are your own. As is the power I have given you. However, you will be asked to help me. You are not receiving this power for free, but I will let you run free for today. When I see you again tonight, I will tell you everything, and then your journey will begin. Would you like to save your game? Yes, I would. Save. Yes, we're in overwrite. Okay. 
was immediately shot back to my own reality. Or at least the reality I was comfortable with. But now I know one thing for sure. That really happened. The Ark wasn't a dream. He actually gave me some sort of power. I have no idea what to think right now. The confusion inside of me intensifies. It's like millions of voices are fighting in my head, trying to make sense of everything that happened. Hey, are you coming? Keila stands before me, his luggage in tow. I notice that I'm also standing up. It appears that my body has moved on its own. Almost like something momentarily took over. Did I say something wrong? Gosh, I need to watch my mouth. Tell him that he did nothing wrong. I let him know I was lost to my own train of thought. He seems to giggle, as if this was a pun. Well, I'm on a train. Uh, I decide to take the credit for it. Perhaps in an attempt to ease my inner turmoil. At least he waited for me, or I'd be clueless right now. That's the last thing I want to be. Alone and confused in Tokyo? Bad combination. I apologize for the delay as we exit the train. Fright looms over me for the rest of the day. Whatever happened tonight would change everything. Earlier that day, in the courtrooms of Terra, a planet far from Earth, yet closer than what is known to any. Ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, I present to you Lord Flair, your current leader in the race for mayor, and with that, your future king. I've been his humble servant for years, and through that I am certain of one thing, he will bring Terra to an age of prosperity. Come now, Riley, you embarrass me. I'd rather speak for myself. I'm flattered, but they need to hear me. I shall speak of this prosperity on my own. This is something every Terran must hear. Under our current king, we are doomed. Forgive me, Lord Player. I did not mean to embarrass you. Not in front of all these people. I mean you no quarrel, Riley. Have a seat. I'll call you as needed. Yes, my lord. Allow me to ask you all a question. You do not need to answer vocally. Just ponder on it as food for thought. If I may paint an image in your minds. You have a starving family. Your only desire is to feed them. You work harder than you ever have before. But you only have enough food to feed half. The rest of your family will simply starve. Though before you can eat, there's a knock. A violent rapping on the door of your home. You learn that it's someone new to Terra. They fled the destruction of their home. All they want is a new life on our soil. They beg for your food, almost dying. But if you feed them, your family suffers. In this case, charity is a curse. They live and your family may die. So what would you do? Would you help a stranger? Even if it goes on to hurt your family? I believe I know what your answer is. Why would I let my family die? Why would I give a stranger my food? I do not blame you. This is your answer. You work so hard for the sustenance. Why are you expected to just... Give it away. Why is Terra expected to give it away? This is the portrait painted of our world. A place to be taken advantage of. Used. We can barely sustain ourselves. Yet we need to care for these immigrants. Your current king is making fatal mistakes. He gives everything away. Freely. And he calls himself the immortal king. If he truly lived for several millennia, well, you'd think he'd have common sense. Something Terra has been lacking as of late. 
every immigrant we accept? They're another stroke on our canvas. One that paints us as lax and lazy. The more we accept into our world, the more we condemn ourselves to accept. This is the power of that word of mouth. At this rate, we will all die. Regardless of our origin, we will starve. I wanted a strict immigration law, but even this would not help us. You don't allow a disease to run rampant. We need to cure this blight permanently. A vote for player will give us severance. A disconnect from all the other worlds. No longer will they be able to use us. If elected, I will devote my life to this. I will ensure Terra's independence and our base right to live fulfilling lives. Only then will we be free from immigration. Only then will our resources be our own. That is all. Will there be any questions? I have a question for you, Lord Player. If you're accepting, of course. Please speak, my child. My name is Kaylin. Please refrain from calling me child. I'm not one of your blind followers. The real problem lies with your greed. You're noble. You have so much food. Why do you hoard and say we've run short? What? If people like you learn to share, well, we'd all be leading happy lives. You're a single man, yet I've seen some inside reports. You hoard enough food to feed dozens. Inside reports? Wouldn't it be more fitting to share? The supply is there, Lord Player. Your campaign is based on a lie. And why do you have so much food? You don't look that round to me. This is why Lord Velasquez wants a tithe. Not on everybody, just the rich. So I don't think you care about our food, or any resources for that matter. You only care about removing foreigners. So my question is, what is the true reason you seek severance? What gives you the right to say this? You're speaking to your future king. Future king? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're avoiding the question. Where is your proof? Accusations require evidence, Kaylin. Something I'm sure you don't have. I laugh at the notion that I'm hoarding. Especially enough to feed dozens of people. I know the importance of giving. I would never keep that while others starve. Really? You fooled me. The story you just told everyone? It was about not sharing and giving. I asked why you seek severance, and you go and get this defensive? Your hatred speaks volumes, Lord Player. There's no need to discriminate here. Everyone deserves food and shelter, not just those native to Terra. I seek severance to be independent. I only want to share amongst our own. I don't want a reputation of charity. I want Terra to thrive on its own. If we keep giving things away, we only give a bad ugh, we only give off a bad image of ourselves. Well, even if you did achieve severance, we'd still be full of immigrants. Not only that, but their descendants too. How does this make you feel? Simple. We'd establish a new Terra. Once we are severed, we'd all be natives. We'd unite as one self-sustaining world. Funny you should bring that up now. Rebranding our entire world? You think that'd be part of your campaign? Typical politician. Making things up. Turning all the negatives into positives. I'll give you credit, but I'm not fooled. I ask again for proof, child. Fine. 
your servant Kabu has all of it. He provided a peculiar shipping manifest. Should be all that we need to prove this. What? And the evidence substantiates his claims. Claims of hearing immigrant hate speech. A nightly pastime of yours, it seems. I'll let him handle it from here. I can confirm all that Kaelin said. Kavu, you traitor. What have I done to deserve this? At first, I thought Player was my friend. I know I'm not from Terra, but he made me feel wanted, like a son. But he started to hate immigrants so much. I realized more that I was only being used. He just wanted a cheap servant. And now recently, he's been hoarding food creating nothing but an artificial shortage. One he can conveniently blame on immigrants. And one that he can use as cover. He conveniently hides his hatred while supporting his campaign for mayor. The problem isn't those coming to Terra. It's the greed of those that live on it. Our immortal king speaks the truth. A tithe on the upper class. Yes, then everyone would be fed. Vote for Velasquez's continued reign. You know you speak lies. Why are you doing this, Kavu? Please look at the shipping manifest. I will place it here for all to see, that you may know player's true nature. Remember, he owns a lot of land on Terra. This is but one of many instances. I'm positive he hoards at his other homes. Forged! The evidence is forged! Do not trust such infantile accusations. It was likely created by Velasquez. Riley, have a word with the people. Ensure they realize Kavu's deceit. And guards, please detain those two men. And back to Earth. We notice that there aren't many people standing around. The initial rush must have already subsided. At least Kilo waited for me. How long was I out? Well, I guess this is it, huh? I kind of pictured a grander entrance. But there's really nobody here. Oh well, I should have expected less. That way, you don't get disappointed. Well, it's better than getting your hopes up. That was sure an odd way of looking at things. Of course, nothing about Kilo was normal. Hey, pull out your phone! We should exchange numbers, just in case. I'll be in touch about the maid cafes. I read up on some really cool ones. He pulls out his phone and waits my information. I pull the phone out of my pocket and do the same. After a few moments pass, we exchange our digits. Got Kilo's contact info. <clears throat> Thanks! It was nice to meet you. I'm always glad to make a new friend. He starts to scurry away. I hope he's the texter. I hate getting phone calls. It seems so weird. Generation is definitely hooked on text messages. I wonder where I'm supposed to go. Rook never gave me detailed information. I expected he'd be right there when I got off. But I don't see anyone at all, actually. I quickly turn a, cor turn a corner and bump into a helpless woman. Hey, watch where you're going, will you? I step back and immediately apologize. I tell her I was just looking for my friend Rook. I explain the fact that I'm a foreigner and... Foreigner? Oh, so am I. But I'm no concierge. You should probably tell your friend to meet you in the atrium. She points towards a large open area. I guess it's a good enough landmark. I thank her and start to follow her direction. But before I get too far, a hand grips my shoulder. Oh no, could it be that man again? Please, just give me some peace and quiet today. Hey! Are you so lonely that you've taken up talking to yourself? That's weird. I'm extremely relieved. For a moment, I thought it might have been that man again. But no, this must be Rook. What does he mean by talking to myself? 
Whatever. I'm glad you're here. The PA speakers mentioned possible delays, and that's not something I can tolerate. We're on a strict schedule. S T R I C T. He starts typing away on his tablet. Strict. Adjective. Acting in close conformity to requirements or principles. Ever heard of that word before? Wow. I thought Kila was a character. Although, I guess I would be a little upset if he was boring. No one likes a stick in the mud. So, where's the other one? I was confused. I wasn't quite sure what he meant. I asked him for clarification. The other contest winner, I mean? You were supposed to be together. Wait, what? Ugh, insufferable. I hate being lied to. Drop the act. Seriously, where is he? Tell him I have no idea what he's talking about. I didn't meet anybody on the train except for Kila. Wait, could that mean- No way. Out of the shadows, someone shuffles towards us. Hey, you two. You were watching us? That's exceedingly creepy. What a group. We have ourselves a stalker? And someone who talks to themselves, too. I really don't get what he means. I was clearly getting directions from that woman. I wasn't watching you. I I was just shy. And I wanted to see if you were lying. I mean, you told me you won the contest, but in the back of my mind I doubted you. He looks me up and down. Rook stares at me angrily. How could this get any worse? I thought you were making things up. We both signed that NDA after all. I changed the subject immediately. I didn't want to break it too, you know. Sorry if I sounded a little sketchy. You did what? Now I pissed him off. <laughs> Breaking a contract is abhorrent. <laughs> well, either way, I have to say I'm really glad it's you. I feel like we got along on the train, even if it was only for a few minutes. We can go to a maid cafe for sure now. We'll be spending so much time together. Isn't that cool? I'm ecstatic. Save the game? Yes. Um, so we want to save on chat. If we're here for three. Um, I'll go through to the end of chapter one. A maid cafe, you say? I'd highly advise against that. They're just a waste of time. Plus, you two don't look the type. Maid cafes attract a certain click. What's that supposed to mean? Whatever you want it to mean, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for making plans without me, though. It's nice to know my input is valuable. Well, what did you have in mind? Nothing, really. I guess that's where you get off lucky. There's been something of a delay. You won't meet Clace for a day or two. So my task is simple. Waste time. It's supposed to take you where you want. That is, until things are back on track. Wait, then why were you mad? We got to choose where to go. You didn't even have any ideas, Rook. I'm changing the subject now. I don't like him. If you want to go to a maid cafe... Well, I know a few hot ones to attend. Most of them are in Electric Town. Electric Town? You don't mean Akihabara? Yes, I do. We all spend lots of time there. It's the place to be for tourists. That and Clace loves the atmosphere. A lot of his outings are to Akihabara. Well, we'll get along great then. But you mentioned something came up? Is everything okay? Why the delay? Oh, it's fine. Clace got into a fight. Him and his tour manager disagree a lot. But Singe always manages to quell him. Oh, uh, I hope it's nothing too serious. It'll be fine. Clace is a hothead. It'll be fine after venting and relaxing. Anyway, we better get moving. Won't get anywhere standing here all day. It's high time we ditch this station. Would you like to save your game again? Yes. There was no options to make during that one. Interesting. After a few moments of walking, we exit the station. Feel soft breeze and take a sharp inhalation. 
feels nice to feel some fresh air after all that time. The plane and trade right here were definitely stuffy. Interesting. The air here feels different. Not in a bad way, I mean, just different. Though it's probably expected in a foreign country. The air almost smells cleaner than it does back home. Whoa, what's with that smell? Not where you're used to, huh? Don't worry, they will get used to it. Just enjoy the fresh air. You deserve it. They did rush you onto that train, right? No time to relax after that long flight. But you're good now. Relax and enjoy it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, wait! Does that mean we're on the same we were on the same plane? That's so cool! What are the odds? Actually, it's incredibly pro incredibly probable. We both won the same contest after all. They likely expensed and bought stuff in sets? I don't say this though. Don't want to downplay Kilo. Pretty solid, actually. You both won the same contest after all. Enter Rook, the social assassin. Learning out the things we don't dare to. I, I didn't think of it that way, I guess. He looks defeated. See? That's why I refrained. Well, we shouldn't stand around. We didn't leave just to waste time out here. Got a little bit of a surprise for you. Remember how we said things would be quiet? Well, Clace went and pulled some strings. The kind of strings that get you a limo. We have a limo? Like... Just for us? Heh. That was a pleasant surprise, actually. Rook gives us a soft smile as he says the word limo. Until he's been waiting out waiting to let out that secret. Yeah, something like that. We'll use it to move you around town. At least until we leave Tokyo behind. But even then, we'll just rent a new one. This tour is going all sorts of places. You get to travel the world in style. Mood completely reversed. Thanks, Rook. Should we get going then? Where is it? Well, actually, it's right here. Right there. Rook points to Lemo Park just a few feet away. I never expected we'd get to drive in that. Especially after they mentioned the low key aspect. Well played. Definitely off to a good start now. He knocks on the window, calling to someone inside. After a few moments pass, a new face enters the scene. So, you two are it. Yeah, I guess. Two winners, remember? We're not here to visit a chocolatier. Not what I meant. Just expected something else. What does she mean by that? Well, you can call me Jade. It's a pleasure to meet the both of you. The contest just had a year of hype. I built up this weird image in my mind, especially the winners to be larger than life. I apologize if I offended you in any way. Surely you can understand what I meant. We often have these sort of preconceptions. I suppose I know what you mean. No offense taken either. It's nice to meet you too. But speaking of preconceptions, can you tell us a little bit about Clace? I feel like the image in my mind is wrong. You've met him, right? You must have all kinds of inside knowledge. I see him all the time. But yeah, many people get him wrong. He's a f and here's a few words I'd use to describe him. Self-absorbed, egotistical, holier than thou. Arrogant, disrespectful. He's the worst. Excuse me? It was a joke, Kila. I'm still learning this humor thing. But I guess I have a few more steps to go. That was her definition of a joke? She doesn't need steps, she needs leaps and bounds. This is almost certainly how rumors are started. Someone won't know she's joking, and it will spread. Rook tries to teach me in our off time, but I guess I've far from mastered it. Oh, that explains it. Rook taught her. He's the last person in the world I'd say is funny. Well, I'd appreciate an honest answer. Of course, he can be shy and silent, but he can also be loud and outgoing. He can be polite and formal, or he can be crude and lax. He's just like any one of us. When you're up on the stage, or even when you're doing an interview, you're just putting on an act for the world. 
I think you'd get along with him just fine. But I don't think you know him yet either. The amount of people that do is very small. Alright, thanks for answering. Sounds like he's under lots of pressure. It sucked to have an image to maintain. And about the humor thing, you're doing great. Keep learning. Whoa, Keela can lie? Thanks, Keela. It's always fun to learn. Anyway, let's get ourselves in the limo. We'll get this adventure started. Sounds good. I can't wait. My hype level's off the charts. Outside the courthouse. Moments later. So we're back on Terra. So, do you think that'll ruin Flair? Only time will tell, Conrad. It was risky, but we succeeded. We now have our inside man. Kaylin can operate from within Player's home. So, I have to ask. Was the evidence real? It doesn't matter. It helped us. Means to an end, I believe they say. We have everything we need to take him out. I doubt Player will go down without a fight. It won't be pleasant for Kaylin or Kabu. What do you think you'll do, Endymion? They'll be put into interrogation, I think. But th this doesn't cause me much concern. Kaylin has been trained to resist torture. The major fact is that he's inside now. We just need to wait for his correspondence. After that, we can formulate a plan. I think he'll plant some evidence. Something we can find next time we're there. An innocent visit, an incriminating find. So Kaylin can resist torture, eh? Looks pretty frail to me. And Kabu? He'll probably face the brunt of this. It's a worthy sacrifice, isn't it? Kabu did this willingly. I guess. I can see it now. Assassin's Guild ousts corrupt pol politician. It's gotta help our reputation, right? We're the Assassin's Guild. We need to have no reputation. I guess. Just trying to make conversation. Like, dude. People found out about us. They quickly find that the king funds us. Then he'd be the one getting ousted. Fine. So what do we do now? The player situation will remain on standby. We must wait for instructions from Caleb. Or until we have another off-worlder, player has been more than happy to take them. With that said, the ritual is our goal. It helps us on both fronts, Conrad. The ritual? Again? You sound like you're stuck on a loop. Our track record of failure is demotivating. You know how Velasquez feels about failure. But we get an off-worlder no matter what. If that happens, we bring them to player. We gain his trust through these failures. It's symbiotic, Conrad. It's cold, Endymion. Yes. Gives me chills. He walks away, done with the conversation. Jeez, what a mentor he is. I'll never get anywhere worthwhile. Oh well. A man can dream. And Demian, wait for me! Senpai noticed me. <laughs> oh, am I gonna get another checkpoint? Please? Soon? We're led into a massive limo. Actually, emphasis on the massive. I didn't think it'd be this big on the inside. Jade promptly gets situated in the driver's seat. This leaves Rook, Kila, and myself in the back. Wow, this is amazing! It's so spacious, so luxurious! Ha! Huh. Oh, sorry, you two. Guess I was in my own little world. Actually, it looked like he was staring at Jade. I find myself questioning the relationship with these two. She quickly turns and speaks to us through the divider. So, where to? Unf Unfortunately, we're going to a maid cafe. And no, it wasn't my idea. 
Spare me from any snide insults, Jade. Alright, Rook. I'll keep them inside. But I think I know which maid cafe you want. Yeah, yeah. Just no balking, okay? This is for their benefit, not mine. I wouldn't dream of it. Thanks, Jade. Means a lot to me. Alright, let's fasten our seatbelts. Don't want anyone dying before the tour. Anyways, this is the really awkward part. Where we're supposed to bond or whatever. He cringes as he says the word bond. Instead of acknowledging that, I notice something else. I can hear some noise coming from the passenger seat. Was somebody up there with Jade? I asked Rick about this. Oh, you noticed, huh? Numi, do you want to say hey? Hey. He retreats just as quickly as he appeared. Huh? I haven't the faintest idea who that was. That was Clay's brother, Inumi. Clay's brother? But he looks nothing. It's Clay's brother, Inumi. Kilo was right, but Rook cuts him off. Was he putting on some sort of act? If anything, it was for Inumi's benefit. Decided to play along as this Kila. Oh, I see. Uh, well, that's cool. Very cool indeed. Can't tell if he's sincere or not. Well, moving on. I should go over the basics with you two. Just stuff to know before I let you wander. Make sure you're paying attention, alright? Feel free to take notes if you need to. Kila and I lean forward and listen intently. Here's a book for the both of you to have. It lists common Japanese phrases inside. I suggest learning a few common ones. Namely, I don't understand Japanese. I'm probably assuming here, so I'm sorry. But I doubt you could hold a conversation. Oh, and does the see that citizens call you gaijin? Well, that's a term of endearment. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a bold-faced lie. It's nice to know Rook can be civil and polite. For once, he's actually helping us. I assumed his default mold mode was condescend everyone. He hands each of us a book. I put mine in my pocket. It's definitely travel sized. I'm sure it'd help. That was one of the things I was actually worried about. If someone tried to talk to me and I couldn't talk back. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one last thing you should know. It relates to current events in Tokyo. It's mostly superstition, of course. But it's got everyone up in arms. So it's better that you hear it from me. What is it? The Midnight Deaths. The Midnight what? Tokyo has been hit by suicide and murder. More and more cases with each passing day. But it's a little weirder than that. All the cases happen at midnight. Like clockwork. Right on the dot. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. The deaths have been mysterious in nature. No culprit for the murders. No evidence. That's why it has everyone talking. The crime scenes don't add up at all. What happened is physically impossible. But to us, that's not really important. There's something far more noteworthy. And that's when these deaths first started. What do you mean? I know it's a coincidence, but... These deaths started a month ago, on the night of our arrival in Tokyo. What? Some people think the tour is an ill omen. That perhaps being here is the cause of it. What? That's not nice. Indeed. I hope that explains some things, especially while we kept your arrival quiet. We didn't need any more fanfare around us. Restrictions are even being put upon Clace, so don't feel singled out in all of this. Everyone is being affected equally here. So to that end, please stay quiet. Don't let anybody know why you're here. At least not for the next little while. Stares at me with squinty, hateful eyes. Rub it in, Rook. I really regret breaking that NDA. And don't worry about your enjoyment. You'll still have fun, I guarantee it. There's just a few precautions to take. Later tonight, we'll get you to your hotel. Everything is still on par for the green, so just don't cause any commotions, okay? Yes, of course. Don't want to make things worse. 
place must be under enough stress as it is. Yeah, I can tell it's affecting them. It's good that you heard this from me. You know how rumors and grapevines can be. People are even saying he's the killer. They're connecting totally unrelated events. Our arrival has nothing to do with all this. But you know how it works, right? People always need something to blame. Figurehead for all of their problems. I suppose that's true, but they should focus on the real culprit. Clace is harmless. He couldn't do that. You're telling me, but it's still odd. Suicides are happening at midnight, too. It's not just a killer. It's something else. Whatever it is, we have no idea. Some people are blaming the supernatural, but I never really believed in that stuff. The limo slowly comes to a stop, but this just leaves us all in awkward silence. Well, I guess that means we're here. Thanks for making conversation with me, even if it was in the realm of the macabre. Yeah, could have picked a better time. Was your goal to scare us away, Rook? Because it almost worked, you know. No comment. Let's go. He leaves the limo without saying another word. For a while there, I was starting to feel free, but now I'm getting bogged down by terms and conditions. Though when I think about it, it's not too bad. You can play along if it's for the citizens' benefit. Wouldn't want to let it slip while we're really here. It'd cause a panic in the middle of Akihabara. Well, here we are. Welcome to Akihabara. Just watch your heads as you exit. Wouldn't want to bang them on the way out. With it, we both nod and do as instructed. Electric Town, here we come. And with that, we're going to end the episode. Thanks so much for watching. See y'all later.